Filthy human blood spackled Jake Johnson's face as plasma bolts ripped his commanding officer apart. The stench of charred flesh filled his nostrils. Jake gritted his teeth, rage and shock warring inside him. He was in charge now, a 22-year-old Space Marine lieutenant pinned down on an alien hellhole. His tiny platoon faced the crushing might of the Iridian Empire. The Saurian conquerors blanketed the sky with dropships, disgorging hordes of armored warriors and floating tanks. General Korvac himself led the Iridians, the ruthless reptilian despot who had enslaved half the galaxy, and Earth was next on the menu. Plasma blasts churned the dirt around Jake's shallow foxhole. Iridian forces advanced methodically across the blood-soaked battlefield, their energy barriers shrugging off human bullets. They didn't consider the human animals a threat, but they were determined to grind them into a red paste regardless. Jake knew his platoon was just a speed bump to the Iridians. Reinforcements weren't coming. Earth's fleet was still days away. It was up to him and his marines to hold the line. If the Iridians punched through here, they'd have a foothold to invade humanity's homeworld. Outgunned, outnumbered, out of time, Jake sucked in a breath of smoky air, the taste of blood and dirt on his tongue. He had to find a way to win this hopeless battle. Earth depended on it. Humanity's survival depended on it. He popped up from cover and unloaded his rifle at the nearest hover tank. The Marines needed a miracle and Jake would damn well give them one or die trying. The smoking crater left by the hover tank's plasma cannon was still glowing as Jake dove for cover. Bits of charred flesh and bone were scattered around the blackened dirt. His ears rang from the cacophony of alien weapons fire and the screams of dying Marines. God damn it, we're getting slaughtered out here, Private Rodriguez yelled huddled behind a shattered boulder. We're almost out of ammo. Comms are still jammed, too. Jake gritted his teeth, mind racing. They couldn't hold out much longer like this. The Iridians were slowly, methodically tightening the noose. Then he remembered. The experimental weapon R&D had given them right before the mission. Some kind of directed EMP device they called the Disruptor. Supposedly it could fry Iridian tech. Of course, it had never actually been combat tested. Fall back to the ridge. Consolidate whatever ammo and grenades we have left, Jake ordered. I'm going to stay here and try something. When I give the signal, hit those lizards with everything we've got. Lieutenant, what the hell are you? That's an order, Marine. Move. As his battered platoon retreated, Jake pulled out the disruptor from his pack. The device was surprisingly small and light, fitting easily in his palm. Sweat dripped into his eyes as he primed the miniature EMP generator. This was it, humanity's last desperate gambit. Iridian warriors surged forward, hissing and snarling, plasma rifles blazing. The Saurians clearly thought the humans were on the brink of defeat. Jake waited until they were almost on top of his position. He activated the disruptor. Immediately arcs of crackling blue energy rippled out from the device, the nearest Iridians convulsed as if electrocuted, their rifles and armor shorting out in bursts of smoke and sparks. Hover tanks sputtered and dropped from the sky like bricks. It worked. Holy shit, it actually worked. Open fire, take them down, Jake roared. Bolts of blue plasma lanced out from the human positions, scything into the immobilized Iridians. Marines poured out from cover, ruthlessly gunning down the defenseless Saurians at point-blank range. The Xenos wailed in confusion and fear as the humans blasted through their useless energy shields. General Korvac slammed a clawed fist on the armrest of his command chair as he watched the battle unfolding on the viewscreens. The damnable humans were rallying, their primitive slug-throwers cutting down his warriors like wheat before the scythe. Impossible. How could these hairless apes be pushing back his legions? Status report, Korvac snarled at the bridge crew. A quivering adjutant replied, My lord, the humans have deployed some kind of new weapon. Our forces are reporting catastrophic systems failures planetside. Energy shields and plasma rifles are offline. Korvac's eyes narrowed to furious slits. He had conquered a hundred worlds, enslaved dozens of species, no lowly humans would make a fool of him. If the troops can't crush these primates, 
Then we'll burn their whole damned world. Korvac jabbed a button on his command console. This is General Korvac to the fleet. Prepare for orbital bombardment. Target the human positions and... Suddenly, the deck shuddered violently beneath Korvac's feet. Alarm klaxons blared as the lights flickered and died. In the crimson emergency lighting, Korvac saw a damage report flash across the viewscreen. The reactor chamber had been breached. Sir, we have reports of human infiltrators on board, an officer shouted. They've sabotaged the main reactor. Korvac was about to bellow a reply when a massive explosion rocked the flagship. Crewmen were hurled like ragdolls as the artificial gravity failed. On the planet below, Jake watched in awe as bright flashes lit up the night sky. Fireballs blossomed among the stars as Iridian ships spun out of control. Private Rodriguez whooped, Holy hell, LT, are you seeing this? Looks like the fleet is tearing itself apart up there. Jake nodded grimly. Must be some kind of sabotage. I heard scuttlebutt about a covert boarding action, but I never imagined. He trailed off as a thunderous boom shook the ground. The Marines watched, slack-jawed, as the massive Iridian flagship, trailing fire and debris, plummeted through the atmosphere like a falling star. It disappeared over the horizon, the impact tremor reaching them moments later. The Iridian forces' planet side seemed to have been thrown in disarray by the loss of their fleet. Bereft of orbital support and with their advanced weapons useless, the Saurian warriors were falling back in a panicked rout. Jake stood up in his foxhole, raising his rifle to the sky. You hear that, you scaly bastards? This planet belongs to Earth. If you want it, you'll have to pry it from our cold, dead hands. As ragged cheers rose from the Marines, Jake allowed himself a tight grin. Against all odds, they had won the day. But the war for humanity's survival was just beginning. Jake's heart pounded as he watched the Iridian ships burning in the sky above. The disruptor had worked better than he ever imagined. The Saurians' advanced weapons and shields were now just useless hunks of metal and circuitry. Lieutenant, what now? Private Rodriguez asked, reloading his rifle. Should we pursue the lizards? Jake shook his head. Negative. We press the attack, but we do it smart, no unnecessary risks. He grabbed his comms unit, hoping the sabotage had taken out the Iridian jamming too. This is Lieutenant Jake Johnson to Admiral Anderson. Come in, Maverick. A burst of static, then a gravelly voice answered, I read you, Lieutenant. Damn fine work down there. What's your status? The Iridians are in full retreat, sir. Their fancy toys are nothing but paperweights now, requesting immediate reinforcements and air support to maintain momentum. There was a pause. Then Maverick replied with a chuckle. I've got something better in mind, son. Stand by. Jake frowned but acknowledged. He trusted Maverick even if the Admiral's plans were usually unorthodox. Suddenly a new sound filled the air, a high-pitched buzzing that rapidly grew louder. Jake looked up to see a swarm of small, sleek craft diving through the clouds, stingers, the most advanced fighters in the human arsenal. The agile ships wove through the disarrayed Iridian fleet with incredible speed and precision. Stinger pilots were the best of the best, each hand-picked by Maverick for their skill and daring. Pulse lasers flashed from the stingers, surgically targeting the Iridian ship's engines and weapon emplacements. The fighters danced effortlessly around the lumbering enemy vessels, peppering them with pinpoint strikes. Maverick's voice crackled over the comms again. You've got your distraction, Lieutenant. Now show those lizards what Marines can do. Jake grinned fiercely. With pleasure, sir. Marines advance. Bellowing a battle cry, the Space Marines surged forward across the ravaged terrain, leapfrogging from cover to cover. The few Iridians still putting up resistance were swiftly cut down by withering rifle fire. The Saurians were in complete disarray now, their command structure shattered, their soldiers fleeing in panic. The Marines mercilessly gunned them down as the Stingers continued their deadly ballet in the skies above. As Jake led the charge, he spotted a familiar silhouette striding through the smoke, General Korvac himself. The arrogant Iridian commander looked shaken, his ornate armor scorched and dented. Korvac saw Jake approaching and hissed in fury. He raised his plasma pistol, but Jake was faster. 
The Marine squeezed his trigger, the rifle bucking in his hands. The burst of rounds punched through Korvac's chest, splattering the ground with green blood. The Saurian general toppled to his knees, the pistol falling from his nerveless claws. You think you've won, human? Korvac snarled through bloody teeth. You are nothing. We will return and burn your pathetic world to ashes. Jake stood over the dying Iridian, his rifle aimed at Korvac's head. This pathetic world is called Earth, and if you bastards come back, we'll be waiting. With that he pulled the trigger, ending the Saurian's threats forever. Jake looked out over the battlefield, watching his marines routing the last pockets of Iridian resistance. In one day, they had turned the tide against a vastly superior foe through grit, courage, and ingenuity. The first battle was won, but Jake knew this was only the beginning. Hearth would need every ounce of strength and resolve in the trials to come, but for now at least, humanity could savour the sweet taste of victory. Korvac's eyes blazed with desperate fury as he saw his forces routed on the planet below. The Iridian fleet, once an unstoppable juggernaut, was now a shambles of burning wrecks and floating debris. All ships concentrate fire on the human fleet, Korvac snarled. Throw everything we have at them. The remaining Iridian vessels wheeled about, locking their weapons on the human ships. Missiles streaked from their launchers, energy beams lanced out, a storm of destruction hurtling towards the human formation. On the bridge of his flagship, Maverick watched the incoming firestorm with a steely calm. The Admiral's eyes narrowed as he saw the Iridian munitions drawing closer. Stingers execute Hornet's Nest, draw their fire, all other ships prepare for a full broadside on my mark. The Stinger pilots reacted instantly, their nimble craft darting forward in a tight weaving pattern. They danced through the hail of Iridian fire, plasma bursts and shrapnel pinging off their reinforced hulls. The Iridian gunners, sensing a chance for vengeance, swung their batteries to track the bobbing, juking stingers. Missiles corkscrewed through space, chasing the elusive human fighters. Maverick watched, counting down silently. The stingers were taking a pounding, but they were buying precious time. Finally, he saw his moment. The Iridians had tunnel-visioned on the stingers. They had neglected their flanks. All ships fire at will, target their engines and power systems. The human fleet erupted in a tsunami of light and fury. Railguns hurled hypersonic slugs. Particle beams flashed like solar flares, nuclear-tipped torpedoes speared out in rippling waves. The Iridians reeled as the human weapons found their marks. Reactor cores ruptured, engines exploded, hulls split open like rotten fruit, ship after ship vanished in blossoms of white-hot plasma. On his bridge, Korvac roared in mingled rage and despair as his fleet died around him. Consoles detonated in showers of sparks, bulkheads buckled and cracked. A structural beam sheared loose from the ceiling and speared down like the fist of an angry god, impaling Korvac's command chair. The general looked down in shock at the twisted metal jutting from his chest. Choking on his own blood, he clawed for the escape pod release. The pod blasted free from the dying ship, spiralling into the void. From the cockpit of his stinger, Ghost watched the Iridian flagship shatter into a thousand pieces. Maverick Korvac's ship is toast. I see an escape pod, though. Permission to pursue? Negative, Ghost. Let him go. We've won the day. And they had, but the cost had been high. As Jake watched the remnants of the Iridian fleet limp away in defeat, he saw the shattered hulks of human ships drifting among the wreckage. The stingers had been savaged, over half their number blasted into molten slag. On the ground, medics moved among the fallen marines, triaging the wounded, covering the faces of the dead. Rodriguez, Hawkins, Choi, good soldiers, good friends, all gone. Jake's rifle felt heavy in his hands. They had stopped the Iridians here, but he knew this was just the first battle in a long war. The lizards would be back, thirsting for revenge. But as Jake looked out over the cheering marines, as Maverick's voice crackled over the comms congratulating them on their victory, he felt a surge of grim pride. The Iridians had learned a harsh lesson today. The human spirit was indomitable. No matter how outmatched, 
No matter how outgunned, humanity would never stop fighting. They would never surrender. This was just the beginning. The galaxy would learn to fear the name of Earth and its valiant defenders. Jake raised his rifle to the smoke-filled sky in silent salute to the fallen and the battles yet to come. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.